I think a pen test would have shown that this was available. An internal review of configurations would have shown this was available. An internal vulnerability scan of your tenant and the Office 365 instance and the settings would have shown that this was available. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cecil Life. I'm Brian Hoagley, brought to you by Side Channel. You can follow me anywhere on social media using hashtag CISO Life, or of course, follow me down on Twitter or a shortcut down to LinkedIn. And as always, subscribe on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you'll follow all the latest and greatest that we have. Today, I wanted to go over a recent but smaller breach that was announced by American Airlines. And it seems like it's pretty straightforward. We don't know all the details except for what's been published out in the news. But from what we do understand, American Airlines has admitted that a small number, and it looks like less than 2,000 customers, uh, data has been exposed through a phishing uh, attack. American Airlines said that they were using Office 365 and a number of employee email boxes were compromised. And I wanted to walk through how that happened and what they've told us. So it looks like using Office 365, they still had the legacy IMAP protocol, which uses basic authentication inside of Office 365 for users to be able to legitimately connect. And it seems as though our legitimate users, whether they were a service account or some type of shared account or just individual users, we're not sure, were still somehow accessing IMAP through and using basic authentication. Microsoft came out years ago instructing everyone to deprecate this legacy protocol and usage and stop using basic authentication and move over to modern authentication when accessing Office 365. Why? Because of the very thing that happened here. Now, how does this usually play out? What traditionally happens when this is exploited and used? Well, a, a you know, a bad actor will eventually figure out a way that IMAP is exposed and start doing some type of password spraying attack. This was actually pretty big against Office 365 back in 2018, 2019. There was password, password spraying attacks happening quite a bit against uh, the IMAP protocol for Office 365 tenants uh, and such. So what does this do? Well, this actually allows a legacy style a client to be able to access the email using IMAP, right? So what it's doing is it's authenticating using basic username and password, and it is pulling down all of that email into your mailbox. This would be your Outlook client, right? This uh, is what most of us are using today, unless you're in Gmail. We're using Outlook, pulling down your information. Um, this doesn't necessarily require MFA, and that seems to be a problem. Using modern authentication, you're gonna be able to use username and password and also MFA for legitimate usage to be able to access that email. What was, uh, what, what's kind of worst case scenario here? Well, an uh, attacker being able to use and understand what the usernames were, does a password spraying attack, accesses IMAP for a number of uh, employees, is able to maybe pull down the entire mailbox content to a thick client um, running that they have control of that they're running on their machine. What would that mean? That would mean any types of emails, any types of documents, any types of, well, really any type of information that was shared, potentially even passwords. We know that happens quite a bit. So really whatever that a legitimate user had in their mailbox, the attacker would have as well. We don't know what type of employees were uh, impacted, where the attacker, which employees uh, usernames were used by the attacker, but we do know that this is how this could play out. So the type of information, obviously, like I said, could be uh, very impactful to American Airlines, but they haven't come out and said exactly what that is. They have admitted that a certain amount of employees were, or I'm sorry, a certain amount of customers, less than 2,000, were impacted by this. So it seems that they've gotten their hands wrapped around uh, the incident and uh, moved to quarantine or some type of an eradication state. So that's really great news for them. Well, how do we look at um, keeping this from happening to you? Well, one, when providers come out and tell you that a protocol or something that they're been heavily dependent on is now legacy and needs to be deprecated and moving over to a more formal, a better type of authentication, 
listen to them. Um, this is very interesting because I bet that a majority or maybe a good chunk of the environment was on modern auth, but some were still allowed to have IMAP access. So take a look at your Office 365 instance. Take a look at uh, your Gmail, because I think Gmail still um, allows for legacy IMAP. Make sure you have these older protocols turned off. IMAP, POP3. Uh, there's even some uh, very interesting older basic authentication capabilities um, under Exchange Online, which is now, I think, merged into Office 365, whatever that is. But that is a, uh, that's an area. So test, look at what you still have configured. Look what you still have enabled as you move over to using more modern capabilities. Uh, this is, again, a pretty easy win to be able to uh, turn off and not allow for. But again, looks like a pretty basic breakdown uh, using an older protocol. Always good to re-review what you have enabled inside of your environment, always testing these. I think a pen test would have shown that this was available. An internal review of configurations would have shown this was available. An internal vulnerability scan of your tenant and the Office 365 instance and the settings would have shown that this was available. So hopefully this was in somebody's risk register uh, for 2022. IMAP protocol used in a breach still. Well, who knew? Bingo if you got it. I'm Brian Hoogley. Just some thoughts, some ideas. Hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe. We'll catch you next time on CISO Life. Thanks.